mountains that I face stronger than the power of the grave constant in the trial and the change one thing remains and higher than the mountains that I Stronger than the power of the grave, constant in the trial and the change, one thing remains, one thing remains, your love. Hope Church, so good to be with you no matter where you are. 
If you're new to us today, welcome. If you've been with us a while, welcome. We are still in the season of Easter, and Christ has risen from the dead. He is alive. Oh, yes, he is alive. And as we worship together this morning, we're going to make these melodies a weapon against darkness, against fear, against depression and despair, that our God is still God, yesterday, today, and forever. So we invite you, wherever you are, to raise a hallelujah to our God, because he is with us, and he deserves our praise. Come on, let's sing. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. And I'll raise a hallelujah my way. And I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder. You're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes. we're not in the same room we are all worshiping together so again no matter where you are why don't you sing a louder sing a little louder come on repeat after me sing a little louder sing a little louder sing a little louder come on sing it sing a little louder sing a little louder sing a little louder that's right Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Come on, make it loud. Sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder.
our worship be a weapon to our fear and doubt. There ain't no God. to the other side from this to transformation Jesus for our sake you that stone was moved for good and the lamb had conquered death and the death rose from their tombs and the angels stood in awe morning, Hope. Let's, uh, in all of our homes and all of our places, let's pray together uh, to this King of Kings. Let's, let's pray together. And so, God, this morning we are grateful for another day, another, a beautiful day, God, that you have given to us. And God, as we worship you in our, in our homes and in our places and all the different places that we're gathered, as we gather together as your people, God, we are grateful for all that you've done in and through our lives. God, we are an Easter people, and 
while last week we celebrated the resurrection, this, this week we live in the resurrection. That God, the tomb is still empty and our hearts are filled. That, that Jesus conquered death so that we could have life forever. And God, we celebrate that. God, we are overwhelmed by your love. Overwhelmed by your grace that you would forgive us no matter where we've been, no matter what we've done. And God, we praise you. And God, we also know that we live in this world that is different. It's different than it was just a few weeks and months ago. And God, we ask that you would give us wisdom in this time. God, that you would give us strength. God, that the directions and the focus and the purpose would be clear for our lives. God, we ask for clarity. And God, right now we come to you asking for healing. Healing for a world that is desperate for a cure. God, we lift up and thank you for the doctors and the nurses and the first responders and those that care for us and those that are providing for us. God, we lift up to you the grocery store clerks and the, and the, the gas station attendants and those who are serving us day in and day out during this time. God, we pray protection over them. We pray for your presence in their lives. God, that they would know that they're not alone in their service. And God, we lift up our families to you. And God, we know that you hear our prayers. And God, we ask now that we would see you working in and through our lives, even in times like this. And God, now together, as your people, gathered together but apart now, we pray together the prayer that you taught your disciples, and we pray together in unity. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And God, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Well, good morning, Hope. Thanks for joining us here at Hope Online. If this is your first time being with us online, uh, we're glad that you're here. My name is Rick, and I'm one of the pastors at Hope Church. Pastor Jeff here is joining us as well. We're glad. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning, Rick. Good to see you this morning. If Thank you're you. watching on our online platform, if you're at live.meethope.org, uh, there are tabs at the top of there that you can use to get to know us a little bit better if this is your first time visiting with us. You can also let the host know that you're a guest with us, and we'd be happy, uh, they'd be happy to greet you. And there's also an info card that's up there now that you can, if your information is changed, you can go on there and change it right there. Or if you're a guest, you can have your information changed uh, or give us your information so that we can get to know you a little better. Also, because of this platform, it's never been easier to invite someone to worship. Uh, there's an invite button right on there. You just click that and you can uh, add their email address and you can invite uh, folks to join you in our worship time together. Now, normally this is the time in our service. If you were all gathered in our space here, we'd be asking the ushers to prepare to serve us as we give our tithes and our offerings, and they'd be passing baskets or buckets, depending on which campus you would be at. Uh, we can't do that, as you know, and so we want to give you some, uh, uh, some instructions on that. And so here's some different ways to give. You can go to meethope.org forward slash give, and you can see all the different ways that you can give right there. You can also uh, text to your gift, and you can text to that number, which is 833-923-2616. And uh, when you do that, uh, you'll uh, send that text, and then you'll get instructions on how you can give right from your phone if you'd like. 
Or you can also mail in your gift to 700 Cooper Road, Voorhees, New Jersey, 08043. It's in times like this when, uh, uh, during this current reality, when we begin to see what is most important in life and those things that we focus on. And we believe that our our giving uh, is a way that we do that as well. We begin to see what is most important in life. And we also recognize that there are some who are unable to give right now. We want you to know that we don't expect you to give. Uh, we want you to be cared for. So if you need support, uh, we want you to know that you can go to care at meethope.org and, you can, and we can do our best to support you in whatever way that you might need to be supported. We also know that it's easier to give than it is to receive, but we want to challenge you to uh, ask for help and we'd be, ha- we, we would love to be able to do that. If you're able to give, then we want to challenge you to give generously because it is a way for us to focus on what's most important in our lives. And we want to know that our, we want to remember that our financial resources are blessed to us so that we can bless others. And so, uh, so as we do, so we encourage you to give and give generously. So this is our sixth week, if you can (laughs) believe that, of uh, being together apart. I can believe it. (laughs) And yeah, we've learned a lot, and uh, you know, from where we started out six weeks ago uh, to today, we've learned a lot. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different for us mm-hmm. uh, because we have, this is the first time since we've uh, been doing this online thing that we, we have a guest preacher. Yeah. So a little background, um, Rick and I uh, meet in January. We take a week up in Princeton and uh, plan out series. And usually, we're really happy if we get through June. Mm -hmm. You know, six months, we feel like we've done uh, good work. Well, this year, (laughs) it was amazing. I mean, ideas were flowing. We were just in the zone. It was a great week. It was awesome. (laughs) We got all the way through November. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when we were done, we were like doing pastor end zone dances you know <laughs> you want to should we show them no, no, no. save okay. that for another time you got it um, so part of that plan was uh we were going to have bishop uh john Scholl, the uh, new jersey area bishop uh, for the united methodist church uh here at hope bringing a message and so then march hit yeah and all of our planning went out the door <laughs> like now we're you know open field running totally open field running we're we're trying to figure out what to do week by week and uh we've you know this this duo thing that's kind of new uh anyway so i contacted the bishop and said I, you probably don't want to do this now uh he's overwhelmed as so many are uh, just trying to care for uh over 500 churches that are a part of uh, our conference but he said, no, he said, I, I really would like to do this if uh, that's still good for you guys, if you don't mind it being on video, which of course we didn't. Um, he said, any instruction? I said, you know, hope is kind of an informal place. So, you know, feel free to uh, just be seated. You don't need to wear a tie or a, even a jacket. Just, you know, bring a message to our folks. And uh, so he was gracious in doing that. And so I'm excited to... Uh, have Bishop Scholl join us um, remotely here this morning to bring us a message uh, on courage. So take a look. It's great to be with you today, and I'm grateful for this opportunity that your pastor has given me to bring the message. You know, I'm so proud of Hope Church and all the ministry you're doing, and particularly during COVID-19. I'm watching and hearing a lot about how you are reaching out to the the community near you, how you're continuing to gather people for worship, how you're finding more worshipers worshiping with you online. Your whole team, your leadership team, your both uh, staff and elected are just doing an outstanding job. And I just wanna say thank you. Thank you to Hope Congregation and thank you to the leadership. Now today, I'm uh, I'm going to talk to you about courage, and I'm going to be using uh, a passage from the book of Philippians. So I invite you to listen for the word of God today. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, and compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete 
be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and in one mind with each other. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but he emptied himself, taking on the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being for found in human form, he humbled himself and even became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. God, I just pray in these moments, uh, the words that I speak might be your words, and they might touch somebody's mind. They might touch somebody's heart. They might touch somebody's life. So have your way, God. All this we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, as I said, I want to talk with you about courage today. Now, when we think of courage, uh, there are all kinds of images that come to our mind, right? Uh, maybe somebody scaling a mountain, or maybe uh, a sports player making some fabulous play, or maybe a soldier going into battle and, and, and rushing into battle. You know, these are all the images that we often think of courage. But you know, we don't often think of courage as uh, some more, well, some more kind of humble uh, look, some more kind of meek look almost. Uh, something that, um, you know, isn't all, um, well, if you would say macho and strength and, and valor, but something that's more vulnerable actually. And today that's really what I want to talk to you about is uh, vulnerability and strength go together. Now, that, that seems unreasonable. I mean, being vulnerable doesn't seem very strong. It doesn't seem very courageous. It doesn't seem very, okay, let's take the hill. But you know, all courage actually begins with vulnerability. All courage starts with somebody making themselves vulnerable, vulnerable for others. Regardless of whatever they do, they, they have to have some sort of vulnerability in order to step out. And you know, this passage that I read for you today is, is really about that. I mean, it's talking about Jesus could have had it all. Jesus did have it all. You know, Jesus was, was with God and, and, and didn't have to come to earth. Jesus could have enjoyed all of that uh, glory. Uh, yet, uh, he chose to come and to be with us and to come and minister with us. You know, that's the Jesus we know, and that's the Jesus we love, and it was that, that, that Jesus made himself vulnerable. Well, let's think a little bit about what vulnerability is. You know, if we read the Gospels, we read that Jesus wept. We read that Jesus cared about people. We read that Jesus also got angry. He showed his feelings. He put himself out there. Jesus allowed himself to be made fun of. Jesus was able to stand and let other people think they were winning when all along he knew that God was actually winning. Vulnerability is really key. And you know, one of the things that vulnerability does is it actually helps to bring other people together. You know, um, it's hard to to get behind somebody when they throw themselves into something uh, uh, headlong and you think and you look and you watch and say, boy, that person's crazy. What are they doing? They're going to get hurt. But you know, when people are more vulnerable, others are willing to come alongside of them and to be with them and to work with them. And sometimes courage is not just about my courage, but it's uh, summing up the courage of other people. It's bringing courage along. And so sometimes vulnerability helps other people to come alongside of you and to walk with you. Also, 
uh, vulnerability um, helps to create strength. And again, that doesn't seem to go with each other. When somebody becomes very vulnerable, it's like, where's the strength here? But you know, I've watched it time and time again that when somebody becomes vulnerable, they actually draw strength from others. They actually bring strength from others. You know, I was uh, preparing for a message one time and uh, I was with a group of people. I always like to do some Bible study with people when I'm preparing a message. And uh, we read the passage and we discuss it. And You know, the theme, I, I was just having trouble with the theme that day because I, I knew that uh, the people I would be speaking with, uh, within that group, there were some people who were going through some real serious challenges and anxiety and, and even depression. And, and I just didn't, I was afraid, you know, what I might say might further hurt. And then one person in the group uh, shared to me as I was sharing this, he said, um, you know, I, I deal with depression all the time. And uh, one of the things that I've learned is that I won't let my depression define who I am. Well, at that moment, it just freed me up. Because people who deal with issues and anxiety, uh, the healthiest people, don't let that define them. And that just opened up a whole pathway for preaching that message. But it was because one person was willing to become vulnerable, was willing to open themselves up. And it gave me strength. It gave me courage. And so one of the things we need to do as, uh, as brothers and sisters in Christ is um, to be vulnerable with each other. Now, when I talk about vulnerability, I, I, I'm not talking about um, pity. I'm not talking about woe is me. I'm not talking about bragging about all the problems you have or all the challenges you have. It's really a, it's a quiet courage. It just comes out at the right time and the right moment so that others feel a sense of strength and a strength, sense of oneness and a sense of coming together. That's what real vulnerability does. It brings people together and it helps us to cheer each other on and to fight even harder in the midst of the challenge. A friend of mine is going through cancer treatments and Gisellus, we all maybe know Gisellus, she's the wife of Hector Burgos, the district superintendent on the Capital District. And this past week, Gisellus had her last chemotherapy treatment. And uh, obviously a great celebration. But you know, uh, Gisellus was willing to put herself out there. Uh, when, she, when she lost her hair, uh, she went on Facebook and shared that with other people. Uh, she actually, uh, while getting chemo treatments, uh, would be on Facebook and she would be communicating with people and praying with people. You know, she was willing to make herself vulnerable in the midst of the illness and in the midst of the trial and the, in the midst of the, the tragedy and in the midst of the pain and make herself vulnerable. Well, I want to tell you, uh, when it was announced that Gisellus had her last chemo th uh, treatment, Facebook lit up, all these congratulations and all these people uh, congratulating her and pictures with her and just so happy for her. You see, Gisellus's vulnerability brought people together and it gave them a sense of hope and it gave them a sense of courage. That's what vulnerability does. You want to see real courage, you'll find people who are vulnerable and are willing to be vulnerable to build strength and courage in others. In this season of COVID-19, you know, I watch people go to work every day and work in hospitals and work with people who have COVID-19. You know, most of them will tell you they're scared. Most of them tell you that they're concerned, not just for themselves, but for their own families and their friends or whoever they might gather with. You know, it's their vulnerability that's helping to save lives right now. 
And that's one of the things that keeps them going. And that's one of the things that should keep us cheering and rooting for our healthcare workers. Well, in the season of COVID-19, let's not feel sorry for ourselves. Let's own our own vulnerability and to recognize that, well, to have the mind of Christ means that we actually become vulnerable for each other, that we uh, cheer each other on, uh, and that we share our own pain and our own struggles that help other people to share their own pain and struggles, and that we keep rooting for each other in the midst of these challenges. When somebody's out of work, what does it look like for us to to partner up with them and, and to find ways to support them and, and to encourage them on? What does it mean for us to continue to be in prayer for each other throughout these days? Yes, what does it mean to have the mind of Jesus? We all have that opportunity. Let's pray with one another. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this opportunity to worship and to praise you and to, and to continue to learn about you. God, I pray for all the people out there right now who are sick. I pray, God, that you'd continue to surround them with your peace, with your health, and with your strength. God, I also pray for all the health care workers right now. God, I pray that you would just continue to be with them and strengthen them in the midst of this illness. And God, I also pray for all of our pastors. I pray, God, for our pastors as they lead our churches today. Give them the the strength and the courage to be vulnerable and to continue to lead with your conviction. All this we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. May God bless you all. Thank you. Well, I thank you, uh, Bishop Scholl, for bringing us that message. And uh, I had the opportunity to hear it uh, in advance. And the thing that just struck me um, was that part in Ephesians 2 where Paul wrote let the same mind that is in Christ Jesus be in you and then he went on and he described the humility of Christ who being in very nature God decided that not to grasp onto that but humbled himself becoming a human and not just a human but a servant and not just a servant but one who gave his life for others man talk about courage mm, yeah. and there's that humility that vulnerability that the bishop was talking about and all of that courage and all of that ability to be humble and vulnerable came because of the mind that Christ had he knew who he was and he knew why he was here he had a vision from God for his life that drove all of the decisions all of the things that he did throughout of throughout his life you know, Jesus came not to make a living, but to make a difference. And he made a huge difference, obviously, in um, the world, in our lives, in my life, in your life, and each one who follows uh, Christ. It was this mindset, this humility that gave him this courage to do what uh, he felt God called him to do. You know, uh, today is the 100th birthday of my mentor uh, in ministry, Dr. Charles Sayre. Uh, in fact, later today, Marilyn and I will be uh, going to his birthday party via Zoom, All right. uh, which is very cool. But the thing about Dr. Sayre, the thing that I always admired about him was this quiet courage and this deep humility of this guy who was a truly gifted leader um, in our area and really nationally uh, within the United Methodist Church. Well, I called Charles up yesterday just to wish him my own personal happy birthday. And uh, he said, and he's still very sharp at 100 years old. And he said, Jeff, you know, it's a little overwhelming and kind of embarrassing all of these accolades that I'm getting and the ways that people are uh, saying what a difference I made in their lives. And he said, you know what we know, Jeff? We know that all we're doing is following Christ and trying to point others uh, to Christ as well. And so if there's any praise, if there's any glory in all of this, it goes to him. And I thought, that's what I love about this guy. A hundred years of wisdom right there. He has this mind of Christ 
in him and it gave him courage. You know, when, when, we, uh, when I felt this call to start Hope Church, um, Charles was less than a year away from retirement. And so at that point in his life, it would have been easy for him to say, you know what, no thanks. Yes. The last thing I need right now is an initiative like that. But he had this courage and this confidence in Christ and this passion for ministry. He wanted to make a difference, not just a living. And uh, I, I just thank God for Charles and for his example in my life. Um, and we all get to be that. You get to be that in your life as well. It does take courage uh, to live a life of faithfulness, um, but man, there's no greater life. That is great. Yeah. And you know, and it really, it, it, it really leads right into our next series. And as Jeff mentioned, we planned this uh, well in advance. As a matter of fact, we were planning in January, like you mentioned. And I don't know if you remember, Jeff, when we were planning the series, we had talked about doing this series that we're going to do right after Easter. Then we decided to push it further into the year. Oh, that's right. And here we are bringing it back because we just think it's such a timely, perfect message. We're going to be, our, our series, we're going to be looking at courage. We're, going to, we're calling it Strong Like Her. Uh, the world has changed and it is changing. We all agree that, agree with that. Life now has this brand new set of challenges that we are yet to face and yeah. we're still learning what those challenges are going to be. So we're going to uh, look at what does it take to overcome fears? What does it take to take, what does it look like to take a risk? And what does it look like to stand in the darkest moments? And I think we have some great stories from the Bible, Absolutely. some Old Testament characters, uh, some New Testament characters, looking at the courage that they face, or the, the fears that they face and the courage that, that was needed in those circumstances. And we're calling it Strong Like Her because mm -hmm. these, uh, the stories are women in the Bible who demonstrated courage. I appreciated uh, uh, Bishop Scholl talking about, you know, courage isn't about machismo and, you know, right, yeah. these big dudes. It, uh, courage uh, can be a child. It can be anybody. Right. It's not uh, just superheroes, not just action movies. but it Sports is, guys. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. people who are just willing to stand for, the, stand for what they believe in and to make a difference in their world. Yeah. So Strong Like Her starts next week. Uh, Jeff and I will be here. We're looking forward to it. It's going to be an exciting series. Uh, we think it's also a great series to invite a friend. Like I mentioned last time, invite, uh, uh, invite someone. It's never been easier. Just uh, invite them through Facebook. Uh, you, there'll be a link there. Or you can invite them through the online platform. Uh, we just think it's a great way to invite a friend to join us next week. And now Steve and Susie are going to lead us in a closing song. Amen. 
His favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family and your children and their children and their children. May His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you So as we close out our time together, just this reminder, these are difficult days. These are really challenging times uh, for all of us in various ways. But like any difficult time, like any challenging day, these are defining moments. You will mark your life pre this time period and post this time period. And so in this time, of uncertainty and challenge and difficulty. Be of good courage. Have the same mind that was in Christ in you. You go through it with great humility, but deep courage and conviction, knowing that God has a purpose and a plan for you. That God wants us to do more than make a living. He wants us to make a difference. And so as you go through this time in faith, faithfully, know that the Lord will bless you. The Lord will keep you. The Lord is making his face to shine upon you and he is being gracious to you today and always. And you can trust in him. Have a great week and God bless you. We'll see you back here next week.